I want to greet you all this morning in the precious name of our Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you for your goodness, Lord, and your mercy. Lord, we just ask your blessing on this time together. Father, we pray that you would give us ears to hear and eyes to see, Father, your kingdom. Fill us with your spirit. Give us wisdom, Lord, as we open your word. Again, we just want to thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Good morning. Blessing to be here with you all again this morning. Uh, we'll open our Bibles to Luke chapter 16. Beginning reading in verse 1. something this morning, uh, a little phrase or a statement just given that says the, or I'll just, there are no shortcuts to heaven. Just a little thought that came a while ago, um, listening to Chad's talk, there are no shortcuts to heaven just that simple. There's no no shortcuts to the kingdom of God. And it seems like man is his whole being, our whole being, is looking for a shortcut in everything that we do. And there is not one. I just want to tell you that right up front. Uh, We know that Christ died for us, he came to this world, gave himself so that we could be saved and there is no other way than him doing what he did. It's the way. He is the way, the truth and the life and he made no bones about it that many will seek to enter in and few will find it. Many will seek, but few will find. And over and over he warns us and tells us that he's not came to give us an easy road, but it's straight and narrow, difficult to follow. Uh, the blessing is, is like the song we sing, the cross may, that he gave may be heavy, but it never outweighs his grace. Grace is one of those things that... Uh, you never, people really don't know what grace is until they've tasted the cross. A lot of times we protect ourselves and isolate ourselves from the problems that we think are going to harm us. Or, but it takes those things sometimes to bring us to a place where we look up and we can find and taste that grace. It's a... Uh, We've got to, like this verse we'll read here, or that was read earlier this morning, that uh, if man's going to find his life, he's got to lose it. And those who lose their lives will find it. That's what it's talking about. That's how we find that grace. We've got to step out to that place to where we can get a hold of it and taste it. Now, he also was saying to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and the manager was reported him as squandering his possessions. And he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give an accounting of your management, for you can no longer be manager. The manager said to himself, what shall I do? Since my master is taking the management away from me, I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I should do, so that when I am removed from the management, people will welcome me into their homes. And he summoned each one of his master's debtors 
And he began saying to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said to him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, Take your bill and write eighty. Here we have a man that's not been doing a good job for his master and whenever he finds out that he's going to be in trouble and get fired that he goes to the people that he's made the deals with for his master and he changes the bill trying to appease them so that they'll take him in and his master praised the unrighteous manager because he acted shrewdly. His master praised him even after he had cheated him and all that he'd done. He praised him because he had acted shrewdly. That's what he was looking for. Someone that would be shrewd with his own with his business. But he had failed that and but when it came to his own he acted shrewdly. And his master appreciated that. Because the manager, because he acted shrewdly. Then he says, For the this Jesus, for the sons of this age are more shrewd in their relation to their own kind than the sons of light. What this man had done and what this parable does is is that showing two different kingdoms here. The man that was slothful lost his kingdom, but he became wise and he found another one. He prepared, he began making preparations for the future. And he became wise, he became shrewd in doing that. Whenever he just had everything going for him and everything was just going his way, he just do whatever he wanted, wound up losing what he had. But after he realized or he came to the place where he didn't have anything and wasn't going to have anything, he became, began to make preparations for his future. I think that's why Jesus is praising this man. He faced it that the road he was on was going to wind up in nothing. And so he began making preparations so that those people that he had been dealing with would take him in and would receive him. Jesus said in verse 9, And I say to you, make friends for yourself by means of the wealth of unrighteousness, so that when it fails, they will receive you into eternal dwellings. He's talking about how to live in this world and prepare for the next world. Prepare for the, the kingdom of God when this one fails in other words the things that we have that we're trying to hold on to in this world are going to fail but if we will prepare like this man is willing to give them away because they were going to fail to make preparations for the next kingdom then he says Verse 10, he who is faithful in a very little thing also is faithful. Who, he who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. And he who is unrighteous in a very little thing is unrighteous in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the use of unrighteous wealth, who will entrust the true riches to you? He who is faithful in the little things will be faithful in much. We talked about that last week, how David was just out being faithful, taking care of his sheep, doing what he was supposed to be doing. And he was given much more. You know, if God can't trust us where we're at right now, how will he ever trust us with anything greater? He can't. Our 
responsibility is to be faithful right now, right where we are. We live in 2021. We can look back in history. We can dream about how wonderful it used to be or how good things used to be. Maybe even see times that they were bad and wonder how people survived. But you and I live in 2021, right now. And if we are not faithful right now where we're at, how do you think we're going to be faithful next year or the year after that? If God can't give us a little bit so that we can be faithful with it now, he can't trust us with anything else. He that has little and is faithful with it will be given much. But he that is unfaithful in that which he has, even that will be taken away. It's over and over and over again in the Bible. These principles, these powerful little principles that if we can just grasp and get a hold of, it's amazing. And that's what he's talking about here. He's talking about these things that are going to pass away that God has allowed us to use, these little things, these material things, these things that he's given to watch over. If we can't handle them the way a person in the kingdom of God can handle them, how is he going to give us any more? We may be able to be shrewd. We may be able to be wise in this world. You know, if this, this uh, manager would have just been faithful to his own master, he would have given him all kinds of possessions to handle. He would have given him more responsibility, but it would have never, he would have never saw into the next realm that he was supposed to be seeing into to make preparations for something later. He would have been content right where he was at. The things that we have, the things that we're given, they're not ours. Everything that we are in this life, that we have, that we possess, that we do, it's all going to pass away. And if it's not been used properly, and if it's not been given away, if it's not been held lightly in this kingdom, then it'll just be lost. And there'll be nothing anymore. He who is faithful in very little thing is faithful also in much. And he who is unrighteous in a little thing is also unrighteous in much. You know, what we, what we have or what we are in this world is we talked about the little boys gave the fruit of the Spirit. And you know, the thing about it is, is we can look at the fruit of the Spirit and we can study that and we can know all about it. Now, I'm going to work on patience. I'm going to work on long-suffering. I'm going to work on love. I'm going to work on faithfulness. That's not how that works. The thing about it is, is we are a vessel. This is a spiritual thing. We're a human vessel. And the fruit of the Spirit is the fruit of the Spirit. It's something that God can allow us to be a part of. It, he can allow that, that, that power that He has and offers that it, it can be given to a man. But we're just the vessel for that. The problem is, is, is we get things that clog up that pathway or that vessel, that, that uh, power, that source of power gets all clogged up and, and he can't fill us with what he wants to fill us with because it's full of all these other things. Our wills 
get in the way. This rich young ruler that we talked about, it wasn't the stuff that he was holding on to. It all came down to whether he was willing just to give it up or not. Are you willing? Sell what you have and follow me. And he would not because he, his will would not allow that to happen. He wanted to hang on to those things. Had he just surrendered, he would have became a vessel that had the opportunity to let the life of God flow through him and to be filled with the life of God, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, meekness, temperance. And all that, was, all that was standing in the way was that one little place in his heart or in his mind that he just could not let go of. Right there is where it's all about. It's right there. That one little place that I'm just going to hang on to and I cannot just trust God with those things. There are no shortcuts to the kingdom of heaven. It takes a cross. It's a cross that'll get you there. And the taste, the grace. You know, everybody talks about grace. But that grace only comes from God when we let go of the thing that's hindering us and take up that cross. One thing I want to the teachings of Jesus are not the cross. The cross that God gives. It's, the teachings of Jesus are what contradicts our souls, what contradicts who we are, what contradicts fallen humanity. And the battle there is not the cross. The battle is who's going to be in charge of your life. Who's going to control your life. So whenever you see the teachings of Jesus and you're conflicted whether you're going to follow them or you, that's not the cross. That's the battle for your soul. That's what you're going to hang on to. That's your decision whether you want a shortcut or you want the cross. That cross is the things that come upon you because you've taken path of Jesus you know good things the teachings of Jesus are good things they're not bad for us it is the way God created man and that's what he wants for us and that's what's good for you they're not a cross but because we live in this world there's a cross that comes with following Jesus. The hard things. And that's where we want to begin to compromise. We begin to want to make that easier. We want to make that path or that cross not quite as heavy so we begin sawing it off and shortening it up. That's where we start looking for little shortcuts to the kingdom of heaven, which there are none. We've been faithful in little things. We'll be faithful in much. You know, young people, you live at home. You live with your parents. Guess where you're at right now. Whatever age you're at, that's where you're at right now. Are you being faithful where you're at right now? Or are you just tolerating, just waiting for you to get old enough to be on your own so you can do things your own way? You are not preparing yourself to be there because you're not taking the step that's right in front of you. You're not living in the moment God has put you in right now. And the only way that you'll successfully be prepared 
to take the next step is to live surrendered in the one you're in right now. We fight and we buck and we fuss in our own heart. There's this conflict. Of, oh, I don't want to do, you know, I don't want to. Oh, dad just gets under my skin or mom's making me do this or all of those things. I have to take care of the children, the younger children. My older brother or sister's mean to me. I have all these problems and I just can't wait until I can go out and do things myself. I'm going to tell you right now, with that attitude, you are not prepared and you will not be prepared to get out and do things on your own. You need to learn to be faithful in the little things that you are in right now. And if you can't be faithful in the little things that you're in right now, if you can't be surrendered to the Lord, how is He ever going to give you anything else? If you can't take care of being a little child, if you can't take care of being a kid and be content in the situation right then, how are you ever going to become a young person? You're not. You see, I've said it many times, dealing with people that we've worked with off the street, they've been on drugs or alcohol, and it doesn't matter how old they are, you can trace back their maturity to whenever they left reality and started taking drugs to run away from themselves. They started drinking or getting drunk to take away from the problems that they were facing right then. Some of them start at 12, 13, 14 years old. And then they get to be a 40 or 50 year old man and they may lay all those things down, but they're still a 14 year old rebellious little child in their heart because they never took the next step that would help them mature to the next one. There's no shortcuts to heaven. It's one step at a time. You know, we look sometimes at the steps before us and we see what God wants us way up there. And we're up there looking and gazing, why can't I be there? And he's saying, you got to take the next step that's right in front of you. You learn that one. You know, some of the boys we work with try to help take them on the job. Their first job is to pick up the trash. Their first job is just to pick up the trash. And they'll pick up trash real good for a day or two, and then pretty soon they get to looking up, oh, I want to be up there on the roof. I want to be up there. And so they're looking up there on the roof, and I got to go around and say, hey, there's a pile of trash over there, there's a pile of trash over there, there's one right here in front of you. You learn how to do that, and then we'll move you up to the next job. You want to be up there, you got to do the one that's right in front of you first, and you got to learn that. Nobody wants to learn that one. They want to take a shortcut and be right there on top. They want to be the boss. And it's just that way in the kingdom of heaven. We can want all kinds of things from God. And God's saying, take that first step and then you can take the next step. Babies, they gotta learn to roll over. And then they get up and they crawl or they learn how to scoot. And then they begin to walk. It's kind of fun watching them. They fall down, totter around, and they learn to walk, and then pretty soon they're running. But if they don't, learn to roll over first, 
they'll never get there. Seems like such a simple thing. Seems like, why would I want to do that? I want to run. But it don't work that way. It's just that way in the kingdom of God. The similarities that Jesus is able to use in his, this picture, this parable, this steward, it all applies right across the board. There's no shortcuts to the kingdom of heaven. There's no shortcuts to the kingdom of God. There's no shortcuts at the beginning and there's no shortcuts at the end. Jesus said, if you'll follow me, you'll take up your cross daily. That means right where you're at. We get to thinking about the future or longing for the past and we trip over the very step that's right in front of us. We miss it. You young people, you may not like where you're at, but if you don't learn to be content right where you're at, you're not worthy of another step. Oh, I just want to get married and start my own family. Oh, I hate cleaning up the house. I hate doing dishes. I hate having to do all these chores. Well, if you can't be happy and content doing all those things for your parents in their home, do you think you're going to be ready to do them in your own? Absolutely not. You may hop and jump across a few steps and wind up married anyway. But you'll be just as miserable washing the dishes when they're yours as when they're your parents. You'll be just as miserable going to your job when it's yours and you're struggling just trying to make ends meet to support your family than you will be helping your dad or helping your mom doing whatever they're doing. God is looking at you right now. You can talk about, oh, I don't do all the bad things. But boy, I hate doing things in my parents' house. You're just trying to take a shortcut. You're just trying to take a easier way than what it takes to take in the step that's right in front of you. That's all you have to do. And when you can learn to be content and happy, being surrendered to where you're at, you can be a vessel. You can be a blessing. You can be a useful vessel of God with the fruit of the Spirit just falling out all over you. Or you can pretend to work on the fruit of the Spirit and just keep that heart locked up tight with your hand wrapped right around it. I won't do that. I'm not going to be happy here. I want something else. I'm not going to be content here. I'm not going to be a blessing here. You're just preparing yourself not to be a blessing the rest of your life. You know, I talk to young people. You know, we all want the best wife. I know you all want the best wife. You know how you get the best one? You be the best husband. You know how you want your uh, wife gets to be, gets the best husband, she prepares herself to be the best wife. And you can do that just taking care of somebody else's, like your parents. You be the best parent, or best child that you can be. How do you want your children to be? Do you want them growing up grumbling, complaining about you all the time? 
They will. Because they've got a perfect example right in front of them. You. Because that's the way you were. There are no shortcuts to heaven. There are no shortcuts to life. You have to lose to win. You have to give to gain. You have to have the cross to find grace. And you got to be lost to be found. Having it all figured out, knowing everything, knowing how wrong they are, whoever it is, that's just another shortcut. Trying to cut across to be something that you're not and not ready for. And the Lord add his blessings. There are no shortcuts to the kingdom of heaven. And the title of the book, Let Go and Let God. We just try to hang on. If we'll let go, then we can let God. We try to hold on and run the reins and do all that stuff. God ain't in control like that. But when we let go, then we can taste His power. And then we can see what He can do in our lives. This morning, we are supposed to, we older ones, we're supposed to tell the reason why we are baptized and the younger ones were supposed to remem- memorize the fruits of the Spirit. And why, why I decided to be baptized was because, like Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again to be saved. And I think that I really appreciate that you guys have accepted me into this group, too. For me... Um, it was just the right thing to do and God put us on this earth to serve him and do what's right and so 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 that was the step um, get baptized and and um, do what's right and follow him and it's it's just been a, a journey and it, and um, learn it each each week it seems like you learn more and and just it's just a a journey. I think for me it was just mainly the step right in front of me and I like Brother David has talked about when you get baptized it doesn't mean you're suddenly a different person and all your all your struggles are gone and everything. I, I think as I get older, I realize more and more what it means to be baptized. It's, it's, yeah, back when I got baptized, I didn't, I saw that that's what I needed to do, but I keep learning more and more what it, what it means and facing it that, you know, every day you face it, hey, am I gonna follow the Lord, you know, or, it's, I think it's a journey of learning what it means to be baptized. I decided to get baptized because I wanted to follow the Lord and do His will and just serve Him. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gratefulness, Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The fruits of the spirits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And how I can apply that to my life is just working toward having each one of those things. Good morning, everybody. 
Uh, I'd like to start reading in Matthew 16, verse 24. So Jesus said, unto, said to his disciples, If anybody wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For, for whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whosoever loses his life from life for my sake will, will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the world, whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what sh will a man get in exchange for his soul? I'm going to talk about uh, carrying your cross a little bit this morning. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't mean literally carry a cross. It means uh, when Jesus says uh, deny yourself, pick up uh, your cross and follow me, it means pick up his teachings that he's uh, uh, left for us. And um, growing up, when we uh, would have to do Sunday school memorize verses and stuff that's what we we're the and adults were preparing us for is they were just uh learn helping us learn jesus basic uh teachings and stuff and i'd like to uh, read verse 19 here or chapter 19 rich young you ruler and someone came to him and said teacher what good things shall I do that I may obtain eternal life? And he said, he said to him, why are you asking me about what, it, what is good? There is only one who is good, but if you wish to enter eternal life, keep the commandments. Then he said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not commit, you shall not commit murder, you shall not commit adultery, you should not steal, you should not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the young man said to him, All these things I have kept, and, I am will, and what am I still lacking? And Jesus said to him, If you wish to complete, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven, and, become, and come follow me. But when the young man heard the statement, this statement, he went away grieving, for he was one who owned much property. Uh, to him, having treasures on earth were more important than uh, having treasures in heaven. He he didn't want to do what it took to um, follow Jesus. He didn't want to carry his cross. He just wanted to do what he wanted to do. He didn't want to do Jesus' teachings. He wanted to live his life uh, how he wanted to. And, uh, reminds me of a story of a man is carrying his cross and he was really heavy and he was bent over and one of his friends seen him and he's like hey if you cut a little bit of that off you know it would be lighter he's like oh that's a good idea and so he cut a little off and ever and when he did that every time it got heavy again he just cut a little bit more off and then he uh, got to the river of life and it was too short to reach across and he couldn't get across and he fell in and drowned. Just a good reminder of uh, going through life. You have people that try to uh, lower your standards to do what they want to do, but you want to make them come up to uh, your level and you don't want to try. They'll try to get you to do things that you know won't ain't, isn't the right thing to do, but uh, maybe maybe more fun, but you just need to stay strong and stand up and say, no, you're not going to do it. That's kind of all I had this morning. Is there any prayer requests? Pray. Uh, dear God, thank you for another day. Uh, thank you for allowing us to gather here this morning. Uh, help us to open our minds and hearts and ears to the sermon this morning and help us to apply it to our lives and help us to live our lives for you and uh, just help us to
be lights and just live for you in Jesus' name, pray, amen. Oh.